Melbourne's public transport consists of trains, trams, and buses. Trains form the backbone of the network, which is highly radial and brings many people into the CBD. Frequencies on each line vary from around every 10 minutes on some lines to every 40 minutes on some outer sections. Most lines, however, have a 20 minute frequency, not good enough for a city of 5 million people. Melbourne's tram network is the largest in the world and provides a relatively good and frequent service. Unfortunately, this is only limited to the inner suburbs where tram lines were built long ago. Buses are then left to serve all other areas, however Melbourne's bus network is quite poor. Although some routes are frequent and highly patronised, many bus routes in Melbourne's middle and outer suburbs are substandard, with half hourly to hourly frequencies, not uncommon. Many routes are confusing and indirect, and some don't even run 7 days a week. This shows the inconsistency and a real problem that arises from public transport that may retract people away from using these services. There is also V-Line, which is primarily meant to be a regional train and coach operator for services throughout Victoria. However, it still serves some of Melbourne's western suburbs, such as Deer Park, Caroline Springs, and Wyndham Vale, as electrification has not kept up with population growth. We interviewed some citizens about their thoughts on Melbourne's public transport. Several times a week. Five days a week, going to work. I'm just 10 times a year. I think it's better for the environment and it's also convenient for me. Because it's less stressful, it's quicker and it's cheap. The train line is quite a distance from my house. And the buses are unreliable and I have a vehicle which is more convenient. Uh, the pros is that you don't have to worry about uh, driving anywhere. The cons are there's a lot of people on there and some of the people aren't quite uh, enjoyable to be around. The pros is all of what I just said. It's um, very quick, very cheap. You don't have to think, you can read. You can have some downtime while you're on the public transport. Uh, the worst thing is um, impolite fellow passengers who eat next to you or have bad, very bad habits. Pros, well, when I'm on it, I really like it because I get to catch up on um, reading or making a phone call or something, and it's relaxing. The cons are definitely the bus services in my area. Even though we have an app, it's like, it glitches and it's so random. Uh, the reliability of the service, you should get um, a easier timetable. So instead of having different timetables throughout the day, you should have a known amount of time between trains or trams or buses. So that if you get to a stop, you know that there'll be a maximum amount of time before the next bus will arrive. I would love to see a quiet carriage. Cleanliness might be one thing. Um, running a better timetable might be another. I think they cover my area, but maybe the app service, so it's actually reliable, but definitely cleanliness. I find them a bit grotty. We also spoke with a PTV officer who stated that there are not enough police. They stated that this could be improved on, creating a safer environment for younger people to travel. The future of public transport in Melbourne looks positive. As the world tries to combat climate change, investment in public transport is essential. New train lines are being built, such as the Metro Tunnel, Airport Rail Line, and Suburban Rail Loop, which allow for more trains connecting major destinations. The level crossing removal project is also improving the quality of many of Melbourne's train stations by rebuilding them. However, physical infrastructure is not the only thing needed to improve Melbourne's public transport network. Timetables need to be updated to boost frequencies on train lines and bus lines. And although in the past few years there's been very little bus reform, things seem to be changing with the announcement of Victoria's bus plan. In some areas, bus routes need to be completely redone to make the network simpler and boost frequencies and increase patronage. In conclusion, Melbourne's public transport network is not good enough yet. While it is excellent in some areas, many other areas of Melbourne just haven't been getting enough attention. Public transport users as well as a PTV worker have complained that some of the people in public transport are not good to be around which can be combated by more police to create a safer environment. Non-public transport users, which make up a large majority of the population, choose not to use it because of bad services and frequencies. 
showing we need to improve frequencies and update PTV timetables to get more people to use it. Melbourne's public transport network has a predictably good future ahead of it, with new infrastructure like the Metro Tunnel, which would modernise the train network with more underground trains. Overall, Melbourne's public transport system is okay as it is now. However, many improvements need to be made to create a world-class public transport network and shift commuters away from private transport towards a more sustainable form of travel, PTV.